So we finally get the Chewy HI-13. It's the successor to the popular HI-12 model. Now unfortunately at this point in time, at least at the time of this review, this isn't a dual boot model. It's only Windows 10 Home. It's got 4GB of RAM, it's dual channel. It's powered by an Intel Apollo Lake Sauron M3450 with a maximum turbo of 2.2GHz. That's quad core. Has 64GB of internal eMMC storage with pretty good speeds on my unit. Now that can't be expanded upon. Unfortunately there is no M to SATA slot on this one here. It's got Intel Wireless AC, the same design and build really as the previous model. So it is a two-in-one with an optional transformer style keyboard and an active stylus. So our port layout is very similar to the HI-12. We have one of the four speakers you can see right there on the side. Here we have the micro SD card slot that supports up to 128 gigabyte micro SD cards. A USB Type-C port that is USB 3 spec, supports data and charging. Then above that we have a micro USB 2 port which is data only. The microphone, micro HDMI out that supports up to 4K 30Hz, 3.5mm headphone jack, also supports microphones. And the second loudspeaker here on the side, so there are two on each side. And then right up the top there power on, volume up and down buttons, those are made out of plastic. So on the right hand side all we have is just the other two loudspeakers there. So the back of the housing is made out of this alloy. We have a autofocus 5 megapixel camera there. And overall the build quality isn't too bad. There is some little bits of flex and creaks between the joins on the rear panel and the front. I feel for the price the build quality is decent. So when we have it docked with the keyboard, that brings the total weight up to 2 kilos, making this thing quite heavy. Now the tablet itself is 1.1 kilos, and if you're going to be using it for an extended period, I find that you tend to tire out quite quickly, which is an issue I had with the Surface Book, which used the same screen of course, that I found that it was just too heavy and big as a tablet, and I used it more as a notebook and docked all the time to the keyboard, which I think is what I'm going to be doing probably with this, when I use it now is just always keep it docked in there. So you have to think about that. Do you need a tablet so large and can you accommodate the weight of that? Because two kilos for some people may just be pushing the limits on what they want to carry around in their backpack with your textbooks and everything else. Moving on to the keyboard now and the touchpad. So the top of the palm rest, all this area around here, that's made out of metal. The keys, spacious. We've got shortcuts for your brightness controls, print screen, page up and down, home, end, that's all there. So layout wise I feel it's quite good, haven't had any problems typing on it. The key travel is 2mm, and as you can hear there, it is a little noisy because the sound tends to resonate through it. Now when you have the tablet docked in here and the screen pushed right back, it does raise up the typing angle of the keyboard which makes it a little more comfortable. Touchpad. Reasonably spacious, it does the job, but it will certainly not be the best touchpad you have used. It has incorporated left and right mouse buttons, and it supports the gestures, so double tap, right click. Swipe down is a gesture that I actually hate, it's one of my pet hates with Windows. Can't disable that gesture through the settings, but there is a registry hack to get rid of that, which is great, because I often keep triggering that. But all in all, it's a quality keyboard, feels good. Uh, the bottom of it, is made out of a plastic and either side we do have USB 2 ports. Here is a very quick size comparison. So the tablet on the top is the Chewy VI10 Plus at 10.8 inches. That's also a 3x2 ratio screen. Below that is my Mi Notebook 12.5 inch. And then of course we have the Chewy HI13 which dwarfs them all much larger at 13.5 inches. So the screen that the Chewy HO13 uses is the main draw card. It's a great screen. This is the same screen as used in the Microsoft Surface Book. It has a 3x2 ratio, 3000 by 2000 resolution, giving 267 ppi. Maximum brightness comes out at almost exactly 500 lux, which is very good. Now the screen doesn't look as good as the Surface Book screen, because the Surface Book is fully laminated. This here is non-laminated, it has a pre-applied screen protector, and it's more susceptible to reflections. So it's not going to look as stunning, but when you're in a room that is dimly lit, 
and you don't get those reflections, the screen looks great. It is an amazing screen. Default scaling is 250% and the colors on it, very good. Do like the look of the screen. I find that it's more of a neutral white. It's not a warm white nor a cool white. They seem to have the calibration of it quite good. And they do claim that it has sRGB 100% coverage there. There's a sample from the front facing camera, 2 megapixels, 720p maximum resolution. You can see the quality is fine, so this is good for Skype, I have tested it out. But what I've noticed is the audio quality coming from that single microphone isn't the greatest. There tends to be quite a bit of static over there. So audio is not one of the strengths of the Chewy HR13. Now it's time to have a look at these stylus. So we've got a stylus that looks similar to the Microsoft Entrig ones, but it doesn't have that button on the top there. Now this does actually work the rear of it, so you could assign that to be the eraser function, so when you're sketching away you can flip it around, and I'll just show you quickly this, you can see there that it's selecting on the screen. Now this has a quad A battery in there, it's got two buttons here, so we've got one at the top, one at the bottom. The nib of it is made out of plastic, so it doesn't feel as good as those other styluses you get that have the rubber tips on them, which is a shame. But the plastic hardness doesn't seem as hard as some of the other styluses I have tested out. Now a lot of people are asking, can the stylus be docked onto the side? Can you actually put it on the side of the tablet? Of course you can, there's a magnet on the side here. And it will sit on there. Now it is easy to knock it off, sure, but it does actually sit on there quite well. The magnets are reasonably strong. And you can shake that around a little bit and that shouldn't come off. But I have found that sometimes, yes, I have knocked it and just moving around with the tablet like I picked it up and I knocked the whole thing off and it fell onto the ground. So it's just handy that when you have it in the keyboard dock, just to have it sitting on the side there so it's nice and ready, which is a nice little touch that Chewy have done this. So Chewy claimed that it has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now I can't actually test that out, but it does have pressure sensitivity, palm rejection, Hover feature as well works, you can get previews of things right there, you can see. So that's just working fine. Now if I go into, this is one note at the moment which I showed in my unboxing. Here the stylus works fast, it's also quite accurate, so I've had no problems with the accuracy with the stylus. Now if you press down lightly, you can see there's just a thin line, the harder you press, the thicker that line is going to get. Now I found that the very light levels are a little harder to get than the heavier ones there. So I'm just going to quickly write now just a few words just to show you what it's like to write on it and the speed of it. So not too bad here. Now what this is one note, so it's quite fast. It's I think it's very light application really and not too bad with that. So we move over something now for the artists out there that want to see. I was just testing it out before. Now I'm not an artist as you can see. That's a horrible cartoon that I drew. But just wanted to demonstrate what the pen is like here. So getting those lighter levels now, you can still do that. So if you're sketching at different levels, slowly pressing down a little bit harder there, and then even harder. That seems to be working fine. So I was doing just a couple of tests here actually. Get rid of that. Just to show you what it's like at drawing lines. So it's a little slower in this application. This is mischief, by the way, that someone asked me to test out. See, it's not quite as fast. So I'm just going to quickly sketch a couple of things. Yeah, that's a horrible cartoon, I know. So moving over now to something like Photoshop manipulating layers here, I'm just going to move around a few layers, that you can use the stylus of course for that. And things are a little slower, so the heavier the image, the more layers you start adding, the slower things are going to get, but it's so much better than the old atoms. The fact that we've got dual channel RAM now I think is really helping. So this is just one of my thumbnails that I uh, used from before, and so far, yeah, that, that seems okay for that kind of task there. Now sketching with the pen, it does support pressure sensitivity, so just go over to the paint tool. Paint tool there, so this is just very basic. And you see here now, a lot slower, but pressure sensitivity is working, but look at the lag there you get. So definitely not as fast 
as for example doing this on the surface pro 4 which would be a lot quicker when it comes to the intrig stylus but it's also because the cpu it has in there you either got the core m3 or even the core i5 and the i7 which is just so much faster there so you get better performance with that but so far i think for a cheaper chinese tablet that the stylus performance is quite good and i do like the fact that we've got two buttons on there and also the other end works on there Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to point out here. I'm just using a screen capture card so you can see this information a little bit clearer. So here we have 3.4 gigabytes of usable RAM. Chewy has dedicated 600 megabytes to the GPU. Now that, some people might see that as a bad idea. Actually, I think it's proven to be quite good as you'll see later on in my gaming tests. It's definitely made things a lot smoother. In the device manager, just wanted to point out a few things here. So. We have a Samsung EMMC, I'll show you the benchmarks of that in a second, an Intel wireless AC on board, and under the sensors, there is an ambient light sensor and a six axis accelerometer. Memory is running 1600 megahertz, that's the maximum supported speed, dual channel, and there you can see 615 reserved there, that's for the GPU. Now the benchmarks, I've just been running a couple here, on the internal storage so first up actually this is the micro SD card slot so it's running at full USB 3 speeds no problems there this is a HyperX Savage sorry if I can get that to show up there we go HyperX Savage and that again is running at full speeds there so no problems with the type C port so just go over it now into benchmarks so you can see there was a little bit of an animation stutter there that is quite common with the system you see a little bit of that slow down there if you lower the visual settings in Windows, then you won't see that so much. But going to the start menu and just showing up everything like that, you get a little bit of it on these Apollo lakes. So Antutu, 110,000, good score. That's kind of what I expect for this chipset. Okay, uh, battery. I'll get onto that now at the start of the video here because it's very important, I feel. Battery life is a little disappointing. Now, this is my test here that I did uh, an hour and 15 minutes of medium to heavy kind of use. I was streaming in YouTube and a little bit of Chrome as well. And you can see there that I lost 22, almost 22% battery from that use. Now, the screen brightness was set to 40%. So the battery life is no way near as good as the Chewy HI12. Now, I kind of expected that driving a 3000 times 2000 resolution screen. Charge time is approximately five and a half hours to charge this. Uh, also to note too, there's something going on with the battery capacity. It says here that it's a 37 watt hour battery. It should actually show something like 50. So maybe that accounts to my battery life not being as good as it should because even though I've opened this tablet, it's a 10,000 watt hour, sorry, milliamp hour battery, but it's not detecting or using the full capacity of that battery so something is going on there okay the internal storage speeds the eMMC they just showed you in the device manager very good this is in fact one of the fastest I have seen for some time really really good speeds here and here's Geekbench 4 not a bad score for the chipset and the last benchmark here is wireless speeds so I have fiber optic here in the office and I can get 300 megabits per second upload and download. Now my Mi Notebook, which has a far superior wireless chipset in there and antenna setup, can get the full speed, 300. That's a much more expensive device as well. So this is actually doing quite well. Now the wireless range, I can go down to the other side of the apartment and I lose about half the speed. Now that's normal when I'm away from the wireless router. On the Mi Notebook, it doesn't quite lose half. It seems to lose more like a quarter so there is a difference there but we are talking about different chipsets so far for me personally on my own unit i find the wireless speeds to be really good and the range i would say is adequate but just don't expect it to be super high powered super long range but the intel wireless ac 3165 chipset is quite a good performer and i really do like it it's a lot better than those real tech wireless n chipsets you have on the previous generation, like the Chewy HI12. 
So how does it feel to use it performance wise? Is it fluid? Is it fast? Now I mentioned before a little bit of slowdown. Now that happens also in the start menu. Watch this. See when that came up that to me that's a little slow. Of course I'm used to using a eight core desktop, but that's not super fast. But other than that, moving around, you can do a lot of multitasking and it's just so much faster than the previous generation Atom Cherry Trail. In the background here, got Edge. This is 4K and that is, should be running in 4K setting right there. And there's some drop frames because I've been swapping between Chrome and other places, that's when it drops. When you've got it loaded here at the moment, you see now it's not dropping any more frames. And the performance of that is quite good. I'm just going to go full screen on it. And it should not drop any more frames. So that's fine streaming there. And if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that if you do the same exact test in Chrome, it is just hopeless. It's useless. It just lags. So the scrolling performance in Edge is very nice. So browsing, really good, no problems. Speed loading up. BBC News, I have not loaded this up before, so let's have a look. That pops in quite quick. And you can see there a little bit of slowdown, but bear in mind, I still have that in the background. You can see it did drop some frames, but if I close that off, you can see CPU usage. It does peak there at 100%, but it's so much better than the Atoms, the old Atoms. And you can see scrolling there, it's not peaking now at the moment. I've uh, got a few things open and going on. Chrome's here as well. Bring that up again. So Chrome scrolling, not as smooth as Edge. That's just not really as good. The funny thing is though, if you don't use touch, now use the touch pad, you see that it's a little bit smoother there and that is better. I'm just gonna load up a random page here. Chewy book 12.13. And you see that popped up really quick. So overall, this kind of performance for internet use, I find it to be really good. And you can actually have a lot of tabs open in Chrome, same as Edge, and it just doesn't bog down like the Cherry Trails do. A lot better. And you see CPU usage is just hovering around 60%, 50 and Of course, it varies on what you're doing. If you were hoping you could tweak settings in the BIOS, unfortunately Chewy has locked us out of most of the advanced options. There's nothing really that we can change apart from the boot order and you can of course launch a USB drive if you wanted to boot something like Linux, which I did. Linux Manjaro, the latest builds run just fine if you've seen my unboxing. Sound wise, the Chewy is a little bit of a letdown. The 3.5mm headphone jack supports microphones but there's a little bit of a static or a buzz, some sort of interference that comes over it that I can hear only rarely when it's quiet. When there's no sound playing, I can hear a bit of a buzz there. But when I start listening to audio, it doesn't tend to bother me as much. Now it has four speakers on there, two on either side as you've seen in the start. Chewy Marketing, they hyped it up, didn't they? They made it sound like they were gonna be amazing speakers. Well, something better than the norm. Unfortunately, they are normal, cheap Chinese speakers. So let's listen to them now. So their maximum output is about 75 decibels. Ideally, I like to see 80 or over. Now you can use applications like Profound Sound that I have right here. It's called Profound Sound Lite to tweak that up. So I'm gonna turn that on now and it does improve a little bit the sound quality gives us a little bit more bass. So that does tweak it up a little bit, but it really doesn't do much. There are only tiny little speakers in there of poor quality. So having such huge screen on here is great for looking at PDF files. At the moment I have a magazine loaded up. Now I'm using Edge to read this PDF. Why I'm using Edge is because I prefer it just because the touch is so smooth. So fitting a whole page in there, the text, very legible, it's great. I don't have to, to zoom into it at all. I find that it's not a problem, the 100% scaling. 
because it is 13.5 inches that makes things a lot easier now holding the tablet like i mentioned in the start because it does weigh 1.1 kilos after about 10 minutes it kind of wears me down a, a little bit and i find myself uh leaning the tablet against something i've got a stand here at the moment which maybe you know you could use if you wanted to use it in portrait which i think is the first time in the video i've actually used it in portrait so scrolling performance the speed of it isn't gonna break any records here it takes a little while for things to load in uh, this pdf file is approximately 55 megabytes so and it's very image heavy of course it's mostly, well, it's all just scanned images, really. Uh, there's another one here that's scanned images. This is a test that uh, Mike Kane does. When he has a look at tablets, he likes to really push them to the limit, trying to get them to load up huge PDF files. This one's got uh, 1,250 pages, which is, yeah, a few. And you can see scrolling that there for it to actually catch up to load all those pages is quite painful there. Look at that. That Come on. Come on, load it up. Very slow. Now this could be something to do with Edge as well. I'm sure there's other applications on Windows that are a lot faster with PDF files. So time to check out some gaming performance. You can see on the top left hand corner the temperatures and frame rate. Now this first game here I'm going to test out is Dirt 3. And if you have a look, I've got it set on 720p the graphics. So. Let's see how it performs. This title here is Path of Exile. Now I'm running it 1024 by 768 on lower settings just to keep the frame rate up nice and high there and I haven't played this game in so long so I don't really know what I'm doing but I'm playing as a summoner here you can see there are a few little dips and lags tipping down to 12 there Of course it is a tablet so you can play store games that use the accelerometer this is asphalt extreme let's have a look and see how it performs it's on the highest performance setting because it's driving 3000 times 2000 resolution which is really demanding but as you see it's actually doing an okay job so far It's a little slow and laggy. Now if you want it to be faster, then all you need to do is just lower the screen resolution, of course. <laughs> That's some poor driving from me. <laughs> Very bad. But you get the idea. It is playable even at this high resolution. Okay, so here we go. I really suck at this game, as most of you will probably know if you've seen my videos. But this is running really good so far. I mean, look at this. There's about, I don't know, 10, 20 players on the server, and we're getting 45 frames per second. That must be because Chewy dedicated 600 megabytes of RAM to the GPU. So let's see how long I last. Whoops, that's an ally. This title here is League of Legends, 1080p lowest settings, and it's actually doing quite well. Probably the fastest I've seen an Apollo Lake play this game at 1080p. 
So not bad at all. So after an hour of gaming, well actually an hour and a half here, maximum temperatures on the CPU got up to 82 degrees. The GPU was the hottest, that got up to 89, but perfectly fine. Now I have actually opened this tablet up. Have you seen my how to open it video and the internals? You see that it's got a copper heatsink on there. So thermals are fine. The back of it, just below the power button, does get a little bit warm, but it's not enough for me to break out my thermal probe and check it. It's only getting up to around 30 35 degrees and that was after an hour and 30 minutes so quite good there all right so that's the review there the chewy hi13 i think is a really nice two-in-one tablet out of china amazing screen on there really good performance when it comes to the gpu now chewy have tweaked this to maximum performance i haven't actually seen games on the apollo lake the n3450 perform so well as they have on this particular laptop now the high resolution does mean that sometimes the UI in Windows, like the start menu, has a little bit of lag to it. And there are other things that concern me like the battery life. I can only get around 6 to 7 hours, but I do believe there is something wrong with my unit when it comes to the battery meter. It's not reporting correctly the full capacity, only reporting about 3 quarters of it. So I should be able to get an extra 2 hours out of it if the whole battery was being detected and reported. This could just be a first batch problem. So apart from that and the speakers which are very average, there's really not much to dislike about this. It's a really solid two-in-one and the stylus performance as well seems very good. Overall, I can recommend this one. Just hold off a little bit, wait for me to check out a second unit, hopefully it's the second batch, to see if the battery problem there has been solved or not. Thanks a lot for watching this. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you're new to the channel, why not think about subscribing? Bye for now.